Monroe's presidency, and the era of good feelings. James Monroe's presidency ushered in the era of good feelings, a period marked by a sense of national unity and pride after the War of 1812. This era reflected the country's optimistic outlook, largely due to the absence of major political divisions and the sense of victory over Britain. Monroe's journey to the presidency began with the election of 1816, where he won a decisive victory. His leadership qualities and vision for the United States resonated with the electorate, setting the stage for a presidency that would be characterized by efforts to foster national cohesion and growth. The Monroe Doctrine, announced in 1823, became a cornerstone of American foreign policy. It declared the Western Hemisphere off-limits to European colonization, asserting U.S. influence in the region. This bold move not only shaped U.S. foreign policy for generations, but also signified the nation's growing confidence on the global stage. During the era of good feelings, the country enjoyed a mood of national optimism. The successful conclusion of the War of 1812 had bolstered national pride, and political disagreements were at an ebb. Americans were united in their desire to build upon their young nation's successes and potential. In 1817, Monroe embarked on a goodwill tour of the United States, reinforcing the sense of national unity. His travels allowed him to connect with the American people directly, demonstrating his commitment to fostering a united nation. This tour solidified his popularity and further strengthened the sense of national unity during his presidency. The Missouri Compromise was a pivotal moment in James Monroe's presidency, addressing the contentious issue of slavery's expansion. It marked a temporary peace by balancing the number of free and slave states, demonstrating Monroe's navigational skill through one of the nation's most divisive challenges. During Monroe's tenure, the Panic of 1819 struck, bringing economic hardship. This first major peacetime financial crisis in the U.S. tested Monroe's leadership, highlighting the vulnerabilities within the young nation's economic system. It underscored the need for a robust national financial strategy moving forward. The adams onis Treaty, under Monroe's guidance, significantly expanded the nation's borders. This diplomatic achievement with Spain not only granted Florida to the U.S., but also defined the boundary between New Spain and the United States, paving the way for future westward expansion. Monroe was a proponent of the American system, which aimed to strengthen and unify the nation through internal improvements. His support for building infrastructure, like roads and canals, facilitated commerce and communication, knitting the country closer together. The Second Bank of the United States played a crucial role in Monroe's economic policy. Its establishment aimed to stabilize the national currency and foster economic growth. Despite controversies, it was a central element of Monroe's efforts to improve the nation's financial health and support expansion. The Erie Canal, completed in 1825, revolutionized American commerce and expansion. By connecting the Great Lakes with the Atlantic Ocean, it opened up the western frontier for increased settlement and trade. This monumental infrastructure project reduced transport costs, fostering a surge in economic activity and cementing New York City's status as a commercial hub. James Monroe's re-election in 1820 was a resounding endorsement of his leadership, with him facing no significant opposition. This near-unanimous victory underscored the national consensus and approval of his presidency. It reflected the era's spirit of unity and the populace's satisfaction with the direction of the country under Monroe's stewardship. The Cumberland Road, another ambitious infrastructure project, further demonstrated Monroe's commitment to national unity and development. As the first federally funded road, it facilitated travel and commerce between the East Coast and the Western territories. This road not only made transportation more accessible, but also symbolized the government's role in connecting and uniting disparate parts of the nation. The Monroe Doctrine, proclaimed in 1823, was a defining moment in U.S. foreign policy. It warned European powers against further colonization and interference in the Americas, asserting a policy of non-intervention. This doctrine not only safeguarded the sovereignty of the newly independent Latin American countries, but also established the United States as a dominant force in the Western Hemisphere. The Seminole Wars, fought during Monroe's presidency, were a series of conflicts in Florida that highlighted the challenges of expansion and relations with Native Americans. 
These wars were indicative of the wider struggles the government faced as it sought to assert control over its territories and manage the complex dynamics with the indigenous populations and European powers in the region. James Monroe's approach to Native American relations was shaped by the complexities of expansion and the desire for peaceful coexistence. His administration faced the challenge of balancing territorial growth with treaties that often displaced Native communities. This period underscored the tension between U.S. expansionist policies and the sovereignty of Native American nations. The debate over slavery during Monroe's presidency, particularly highlighted by the Missouri Compromise, was a defining moment for the nation. The Compromise, which admitted Missouri as a slave state and Maine as a free state, temporarily quelled the division, but laid bare the deep-seated conflicts over slavery that would eventually lead to civil war. The cultural and social aspects of the era of good feelings reflected a nation striving for unity amidst its diversity. This period saw an emerging American identity, fostered by a sense of national pride after the War of 1812. Cultural expressions from literature to art began to depict uniquely American themes, contributing to a growing national consciousness. Newspapers and media played a pivotal role during Monroe's presidency, significantly influencing public opinion and political discourse. The era of good feelings was characterized by a reduction in partisan newspapers as the nation enjoyed a brief period of political unity. However, this unity was superficial, masking underlying regional and political tensions that newspapers would later exacerbate. Monroe's presidential cabinet was a testament to his desire for a competent and unified government. Key figures such as John Quincy Adams, who served as Secretary of State, were instrumental in shaping foreign policy, including the Monroe Doctrine. This cohesive team was crucial in navigating the challenges of post-war America and laying the groundwork for future prosperity. The era of good feelings, coined during James Monroe's presidency, marks a pivotal moment in American nationalism. This period was characterized by a sense of unity and pride across the nation, which had emerged victorious from the War of 1812. Monroe's leadership fostered this national cohesion, ushering in an era where political divisions were momentarily set aside in favor of collective identity and purpose. As the country moved forward, the transition from the era of good feelings saw the rise of growing sectionalism. Despite Monroe's efforts to maintain national unity, the differences between the North and the South, especially over issues like slavery and economic policy, began to deepen. This shift marked the beginning of a divide that would eventually lead the country into civil war. Monroe's economic policies played a significant role in shaping the nation. Through tariffs, banking reforms, and responses to the Panic of 1819, his administration sought to stabilize and stimulate the American economy. These measures were crucial in laying the groundwork for future prosperity, but also highlighted the challenges of managing a diverse and growing economy. The Monroe Doctrine, perhaps Monroe's most lasting contribution to foreign policy, established a new paradigm for American engagement with the world. It asserted that the Western Hemisphere was off-limits to European colonization and interference, reflecting a growing sense of American sovereignty and influence. This doctrine would shape U.S. foreign policy for centuries, emphasizing the nation's role as a protector of democracy in the Western Hemisphere. The legacy of James Monroe's presidency is profound, influencing American policy and identity well beyond his time in office. His leadership during the era of good feelings and his strategic foreign policy initiatives set precedents that have endured. Monroe's vision of a united, prosperous, and influential America continues to resonate, underscoring his pivotal role in the nation's formative years. James Monroe's presidency navigated these turbulent waters, striving for unity while the nation grappled with the moral and economic implications of slavery. This period highlighted the complexity of achieving true national harmony amidst such divisive issues. Monroe's military policy during his presidency underscored the balance between defense and expansion. As America sought to secure its borders and assert its presence on the global stage, Monroe focused on strengthening the military. This approach not only aimed to protect the young nation, but also facilitated its growth, playing a pivotal role in the country's expansionist ambitions. The formation of American identity was significantly influenced by Monroe's contributions. 
His presidency, occurring at a time when the United States was still sculpting its national character, laid down the foundational principles of unity, liberty, and democracy. Monroe's leadership and policies helped to weave these ideals into the fabric of American society, shaping a distinct national identity. During the era of good feelings, the political landscape was characterized by a decline in Federalist opposition, leading to a one-party system dominated by the Republicans. This unique political climate facilitated a sense of unity and consensus, but also masked underlying regional and ideological differences. Monroe's presidency thus navigated a period of apparent harmony, which belied the complexities and divisions that lay beneath the surface. The impact of the era of good feelings on American literature and arts was profound. This period inspired a surge in nationalistic expressions through various forms of art, reflecting the optimism and unity of the time. Artists and writers drew upon the themes of expansion, liberty, and the American landscape, contributing to the burgeoning sense of an American cultural identity. This cultural flourishing under Monroe's presidency underscored the interconnectedness of politics, society, and the arts in shaping the national consciousness. James Monroe's foreign relations were notably shaped by his dealings with Europe and Latin America. His diplomatic finesse led to the Monroe Doctrine, a cornerstone of American foreign policy that warned European powers against further colonization in the Western Hemisphere, thereby asserting U.S. influence in Latin American affairs. The Treaty of 1818 with Britain marked a significant achievement in Monroe's presidency, setting boundaries between U.S. and British territories in North America and paving the way for peaceful relations. This agreement not only ensured peace, but also facilitated expansion and reinforced the United States' sovereignty on the international stage. Monroe's engagement with the world was not just about asserting dominance, but also about fostering education and intellectual exchange. The era saw a burgeoning interest in American education, influenced by the nation's growing diplomatic relationships and the desire to cultivate a well-informed citizenry ready to participate in the Republic's affairs. However, the end of the era of good feelings came with the election of 1824, which saw a contentious battle that marked the return of partisan politics. The election underscored the fragile nature of national unity and foreshadowed the sectional divides that would eventually lead to the Civil War. The Compromise of 1820, or the Missouri Compromise, exemplified Monroe's efforts to balance the interests of free and slave states, temporarily quelling the simmering tensions over slavery. This legislative act was a testament to Monroe's vision for a unified nation, despite the challenges that lay ahead. James Monroe envisioned an America characterized by unity, expansion, and prosperity. His presidency focused on fostering national cohesion post-war of 1812, expanding the nation's borders through treaties like the adams onis and promoting economic growth. Monroe's efforts aimed to secure a prosperous future, laying foundational stones for the burgeoning American identity. Women and families played pivotal roles during the era of good feelings, contributing significantly to the social fabric of the nation. Their involvement in community and home life underpinned the era's sense of unity and national pride. As the nation prospered and expanded, the traditional roles of women began to evolve, reflecting the changing American landscape. Monroe's presidency holds a distinguished place in American history, marking a period of relative internal peace and national confidence. His leadership during the era of good feelings helped to solidify the United States' position as a burgeoning power navigating through internal divisions and external challenges with a focus on national unity and growth. Behind the presidency was James Monroe the man, a leader shaped by his experiences as a soldier, statesman, and diplomat. His personal life and character were marked by integrity, resilience, and a deep commitment to the American Republic. Monroe's dedication to public service and his vision for the country's future left an indelible mark on the presidency and the nation. Reflecting on the era of good feelings and Monroe's lasting impact reveals a period of significant growth and unity in American history. His presidency not only navigated the country through challenges, but also set the stage for future development. Monroe's legacy is a testament to the enduring spirit of American progress and unity.